Aloha guys, it is so good to be back with you for another video. I know it has been a while and I realize that a lot of you might not follow me on Instagram so you might have no idea why I disappeared for three weeks. So I thought I would make a video and check in with you guys because this is something that feels really, really important to talk about. I guess as some of you may know, I have been up living at Pu'uhonua or Pu'uhuluhulu at the base of Mauna Kea Access Road, living in my truck, because I am doing my best to be a support person in the standoff between Kia'i, or protectors of Mauna Kea, and the state, fake state, of Hawaii that is trying to ramrod through a project called the 30 meter telescope. So before I start rambling, I want to just make sure that some initial facts are established about the 30 meter telescope or the TMT and Mauna Kea. So first of all, it's incredibly important to keep in mind that Mauna Kea is a conservation district because it is such a unique and special ecosystem. And as a conservation district, construction is absolutely completely prohibited. It is against state law, even though it's fake state law, and it is definitely going against the cultural beliefs of Native Hawaiians. The summit of Mauna Kea is what's known as kapu, or off limits. You don't go there unless you absolutely have to and you have done a lot of physical and spiritual preparation. Second of all, Mauna Kea is ceded land. So that means that it was land that was ceded by the queen when she was under duress during the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom. So there is a lot of historical information about this. I'm not gonna go into it now, but I will leave some links down below. But long story short, and very simplistically, the summit of Mauna Kea, as well as a lot of other land in Hawaii, was flat out stolen. And I apologize, I just had to pause because we're having some camera issues because it is so hot and humid right now. So bear with me, I appreciate your patience. It's also started raining, so maybe you can be patient with the audio too. So given these facts about Mauna Kea, that construction is illegal, it's not supposed to be happening, we really do have to question how, um, in the first place, 13 telescopes were built and still stand on the summit of Mauna Kea. But we also have to ask, how in the world does anyone think that it is legal or okay to build an 18-story, eight-acre telescope complex on the pristine northern summit of Mauna Kea? And purely from an environmentalist point of view, it's not. Construction of the TMT would permanently destroy that land. That land would never be able to be restored back to the condition in which it was previously. And there have been many environmental impact statements done on the astronomy related activity that's already happening on the Mona and those statements have consistently found that the effect of astronomy on the environment of Mauna Kea has been severe and adverse. So environmentally speaking this project is not okay. Then of course we come to the cultural issue which just to be perfectly frank, is not something that I have the authority or the depth of knowledge to really speak on, and it's not my culture. And so I definitely don't wanna step on any toes by claiming that I possess knowledge or experience that I don't. But since this is such a, a huge aspect of what's going on up there, I will do my best to explain very basically and please check out the links that are down below so you can get this information from people who are much more qualified and knowledgeable than I am. But in case you didn't know, Hawaiians still exist. I know, it's shocking news. However, I would like all of you guys to stop and think right now about the representations of Hawaiian culture that you guys have been exposed to. I'll wait. I'm sure a lot of you guys watched Moana and I'm sure a lot of you guys have come to Hawaii on vacation and experienced a luau at a hotel or something like that. 
I'm sure you all have seen our politicians wearing lei and people dancing hula, and those are the aspects of Hawaiian culture that are really celebrated widely and really acknowledged by the fake state of Hawaii. But a lot of these cultural representations are framed in the past tense, as if everything is in the past and these Hawaiian people, they just, you know, they do this stuff for fun without acknowledging that there are many traditional cultural practitioners in Hawaii today who keep their traditional cultural knowledge and practices alive. And so, so many of us, especially settlers, foreigners, Haole people, do not acknowledge that Hawaiian culture is a living culture and it's evolving. You know, a few weeks ago on Mauna Kea, there were Hale and Ahu, kind of the equivalent of like sacred sites and shrines that were dismantled by the DLNR and they were hauled away in trucks labeled junk removal. And that removal was approved because someone determined that those sites were not real. Even though these were sites of prayer and worship and communion with the divine and places of really significant community gathering, there was no acknowledgement that these sites were part of the living Hawaiian culture. And similarly, in the process of the TMT being approved, there has been an extremely selective interpretation of what is sacred to indigenous Hawaiians or Kanaka Maoli people. And to watch this consistent dismissal of thousands and thousands of people who are standing up and testifying and saying, Mauna Kea is deeply sacred to me and my ohana, Mauna Kea is my ancestor, Mauna Kea is part of the aina, the land, and the land is part of us. So when I see how readily the cultural facts have just been dismissed and ignored. And when I see how readily the environmental facts have been dismissed and ignored, I really can't form any other opinion about the TMT approval process other than that it has been lawless and corrupt. And so to quote Gandhi, civil disobedience becomes a sacred duty when the state becomes lawless or corrupt. And so here we are because the laws weren't followed and the process was so clearly biased. There is now a physical stand to stop the desecration of Mauna Kea. And what really blows me away is that even with a sustained encampment of 1,000 plus peaceful human beings who have gathered with nothing but aloha for the aina, for the land, and for one another. And despite the absolute integrity that these people have held themselves in, they are still being dismissed and ignored by the governor of the fake state of Hawaii and by the TMT board, who they just seem to be completely blind and or deaf to the reality of the situation, which is the 30 meter telescope is not going to be built on Mauna Kea. And yet it is like the governor and the board and people who support the TMT, they, they simply are not listening. And I run into this over and over and over again when talking to people about complex issues, especially issues that have to do with culture or race or history, and people who just don't get it. They just keep repeating the same thing over and over again. And yet they talk, 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 but they don't realize that talking and listening are mutually exclusive activities. And so you see so much speaking and so much formation of opinions on subjects which they don't understand and yet so little listening to what is being said back to them in response. And it gets so tiresome because people have spoken definitively on the environmental laws on Mauna Kea. People have spoken definitively on the cultural significance of Mauna Kea, and yet it keeps falling on deaf ears. Proponents of the TMT keep using words like compromise without understanding that there is no compromise in this case because the compromise 
was the 13 other telescopes that were put up without adequate permission. The compromise has been the steady stream of corporations and developers who have come here and been allowed to buy up the land and develop it without any consideration to the future, without any consideration to the people who have called these islands home for generations. It would be the definition of insanity to believe that the fake state of Hawaii or developers are going to be respectful or are going to rein themselves in. And so I guess quite obviously this whole situation is so much bigger than just a, a silly telescope that they want to build here. It really comes down to what are human beings going to do with the very little that we have not yet ruined on this planet. What are we going to do? Are we going to put a stop to the relentless development that will quite literally irrevocably destroy everything? Or are we just going to allow this destruction to continue? And it doesn't feel like a coincidence that this movement has been so infused with younger people because I tell you what, my generation and the children that are being brought into this world by my generation, we don't have futures. There's not a lot left for us and our children are not going to have anything unless we fiercely protect it from greed. The same greed that has been decimating this earth for the last hundred years. Enough has to be enough or we are not going to have anything left. You know, one of the most ridiculous arguments I see people make for the TMT is that we need this telescope so that we can search for other planets that humanity can go and colonize. And like the amount of stupidity that is inherent in that thought process is absolutely mind boggling because if we can't figure out how to keep our biosphere livable for humanity, how do you think we're going to transform the biosphere of another planet on which humanity did not evolve on and is not designed to survive in? And what makes you think that 9 billion people are going to be taken to colonize another planet? You are not not going. You will be left behind. It's going to be Richard Branson and Elon Musk and a bunch of supermodels that go and colonize that other planet. You and I are going to be here and we're going to be screwed. But I digress. I have been so proud and humbled to be up on Mauna Kea and to be standing with and learning from some of the most amazing human beings I have ever come into contact with. I have been spending time with people who are so strong in their integrity and so dedicated to their commitment of aloha aina and aloha for one another. And to witness this has given me the most hope that I have had for humanity in my entire life. There are these hats that say aloha will save the world. And up until this point, I thought it was just a cutesy hat. But I'm actually seeing now that embodied aloha for our land, for each other, for ourselves, could actually do it. What's happening on Mauna Kea right now feels like the activation of a force that could very quickly and radically change the way humans interact with our Earth and determine whether or not we are able to survive with her. And so I really hope that you guys explore the videos and the resources that are down below and get a little bit more familiar with what is going on on Mauna Kea. And I sincerely ask that you guys support what's happening in any way that you can. Certainly monetary donations help. I will leave links to a couple of trustworthy avenues of donation. But what really, really, really helps right now is to share what's going on and to take the time to reach out to people through social media or your real life and explore what's happening with them. It's also incredibly helpful 
for you guys to reach out to the governor of Hawaii. It's incredibly important to reach out to the funders of the TMT, especially the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Their contact information is linked down below. So the more that you reach out to these entities, the more that you share, the more that you talk about what's happening up on Mauna Kea, the more that will keep everyone safe, including Mauna Kea. As my lighting changes always. So I suppose that's all I have to say about that for now. I really appreciate your all's patience. I really appreciate your all's support. It's amazing to have this community to be able to share what's going on with you guys. Anyway, don't know if that grammatically made sense, whatever. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you all very soon. So anyway, um, until I see you guys again, I'm not sure when it'll be. Make better choices for yourselves. No one will do it for you and take really, really good care. I will, again, hopefully see you guys soon. Bye.